Plans for the world's largest hydroelectric project have been given new momentum. Australia's Fortescue Metals Group has been awarded exclusive rights to develop the Grand Inga network of dams in Congo that would be twice the size of the current global biggest. The aim is to use the powerful Inga Falls at the mouth of the Congo River to generate vast amounts of electricity for it to work up to six more dams on top of two that are already there and several power plants need to be built. The finished project would be capable of producing at least 40 gigawatts of electricity. That's twice as much as China's Three Gorges Dam, which is currently the world's largest. It's enough power to cover 40% of Africa's power needs. Total costs for the project are estimated, though, to be around $80 billion. Grandinga has been in the offing since the 1990s, but until now, there just hasn't been the money around to make it happen. Let's discuss the project further with Trusha Reddy, who is a climate activist with the NGO Womin Africa. She joins us from South Africa. Thanks for being on the programme. 40% uh, of Africa's energy needs filled with renewable sources. Uh, sounds like that can only be a good thing. Um, yeah. <laughs> so that's an interesting one because... Um, uh, big hydroelectric dams are always sort of lumped in together with renewable energy. And we believe that um, it's a very controversial sort of use of the term of renewable energy. We don't actually believe that this idea of having big hydroelectric dams um, should be considered um, as part of the overall sort of uh, electricity mix in terms of the, the transition to, to green energy. But this would be a major shift away from fossil fuels. Yes. So <laughs> I'm not sure about a major shift away necessarily from fossil fuels. Um, there's also uh, a lot of other uh, disastrous projects coming up as well. Um, but the the thing about big hydroelectric dams is is it's very little known that there's also um, you know massive impacts that they actually cause, including climate impacts. Um, there's several climate impacts that I would wouldn't go into uh, detail here, but is very little known and so is sort of used as a way to say that um, you know uh, the these big dams are basically. Uh, climate friendly, and they really are not. Uh, added to that, of course, are the other impacts from big dams. Uh, there are massive displacements of people uh, at the site of the dam uh, who usually um, sort of depend on the water from the uh, from the rivers there. So from, in this case, the, the Big Congo River there. Um, the first two uh, iterations of Inga, um, in fact, that were built in the 90s, I think, um, people who were di displaced from, from those dams at the time, thousands of people, uh, have still not even been given compensation for that. Uh, there's a huge amount of other environmental impacts as well. Um, and in general, basically... But, but, uh, um, as well as that it, impact on the displacement of people, this project has yes. the potential to create maybe hundreds of thousands of jobs. I mean, that, that's surely something that's welcome. So that's a controversial issue as well. I mean, um, if you look at the case of South Africa, for example, um, uh, South Africa is supposed to be the major offtake of the electricity that's going to be produced from the Inga Dam. Um, the, um, the sorry, um, the electricity that that is um, created is is um, will actually create no jobs in South Africa. Uh, in right. effect, no. But um, the, so so in, in Congo, it will create many more. Actually, state. just because we're we're running low on time, and and, and your organisation is actually um, mainly focused on women's access to resources. I and mean, why is your organisation mm -hmm. so interested in the the Inga the Grand Inga project? I think because we see that uh, most of the major impacts are faced and borne by women 
ultimately. Um, women, because of their prescribed roles as carers in communities, uh, they're the ones who go and fetch the water from the rivers uh, for their communities. Uh, they are the ones that actually protect and defend the land. Uh, they grow from the land. And so um, if, if there's big destructive projects like Inga coming in, um, you can see that there's going to be multiple impacts uh, that they face because of it. If you look at South Africa specifically, um, and this is all coming up from a, from a latest report um, that we've just done, which shows the socioeconomic costs of the Inga to South Africa, it shows that women will be disproportionately impacted as well right. in a negative way in South Africa. Okay, Trusha Reddy from Women Africa. Thanks a lot for joining us on DW Business. Thank you. Bye.